today's video, we'd like I'd like to talk to you about using the keypad in five independent button operating mode. So the first thing we need to do is select the operating mode to be five independent buttons. We now on the left hand side have um, different menus for the top left, top right, center, etc. So let's jump in to these menus and have a look at what the options are within the parameters. The first thing we have to select is the function. There are multiple different functions and we're going to go through them in turn, looking at the parameters that are available for each. So to start with switching, the default command on pressing the button is to toggle the light on and off. You can obviously set this to be on or off, to just send a one bit one or just send a one bit zero. But our recommendation for most applications would be that that button would turn on and off a lighting circuit directly. A case where you might want that just to be um, uh, an off could be, for example, if you're using that button for an all house off. So you only ever want that button to send a one bit zero to all of your actuators in your house to turn off the entirety of the house. But the default is toggle. We've also got some options here around status feedback LEDs, um, but we're gonna look at that in a separate video. So let's have a look at the second function, dimming. So the default here, uh, reaction to short and long presses. So a short press of a dimming button will turn, um, when it's in single button operating mode, will turn the, the light on. Another short press will turn it off. So on off toggle, exactly the same as switching. But then if you long press, the first long press will dim the light up. And then the second long press will dim the light down. So this is just a really nice user intuitive way of having control of a dimming channel from a single button. If you want to use two buttons to control your dimmed lighting channel, you can change the single button to be um, brighter, brighter on for the, maybe this top left button. And then maybe bottom left, we could change that to be um, uh, brighter, um, sorry, darker off. So what we've now set up is this top left button is basically gonna increase the brightness when we um, click and hold it. And the bottom left is gonna decrease the brightness when we click and hold it. Um, but the default setup, which we change this one back to is single button operation. You can change the duration of time that your finger has to be on the button for it to detect it as a long press compared to a short press. You can do that here. If you have configured the um, keypad to be brighter on, there are some advanced parameters here, which we'll talk about in a separate, uh, in a separate um, video. But for most actuators nowadays, these um, parameters are actually not relevant. To change this back to the default. So let's go on to blinds. So in a similar context to blinds, the default operation for blind control is single button operation. The single button mode is intended only for roller blinds. In this mode, both the step stop object and the move object will toggle between sending up and down commands. You can alternatively specify a button just to be down or just to be up in a similar way that we could specify the dimming channel just to dim up or dim down. Again, you specify the long press duration. And then to stop the blinds, we have two different options. One option is that the blind will travel. So when you press that, if we have it on release button, the user experience is you come up to the blind, you come up to the, sorry, to the blind, you come up to the button, you press and hold the button, the blind will, for example, start going down. And the minute that you remove your finger, the blind will stop. Or you can set it up, stop blinds by short press. In this example, you come up to the blinds, you long press and hold the button and release your finger. The blind will then traverse downwards. And then to stop the blind, you then just give the button a short press. So there's two options here um, in the way you want to stop the blind. Right, let's go on to scene control. 
So the default, the default setup for scene control is just to send a single scene on pressing the button. You can specify the scene number here. The other thing you can do is specify the action on a long press. So it will always send the scene on a short press, but on a long press, you can either do nothing, which is the default. You can save the scene. So this will send a save scene telegram on, on the bus so that your current setup of the room is saved in the whatever device you're using for managing the scenes. Um, or quite interestingly, you can also set up single, single button toggle dimming. So what does that do? So when you press a scene button with a short press, it's just going to send the scene number. But when you press it for a long duration of time, it sends a four bit dimming command on the, uh, on the bus. And if you connect that four bit group address to all the various different dimming channels that are in the scene that you are activating, then you can use a long press of that button to dim the, um, dim all those lights up on the first press and down on the second long press. So that's a really nice feature of how you can effectively have scene control, um, but also overlay dimming on a, on a long press using single button toggle dimming. The other option we've got here, instead of sending a single scene on pressing the button, we can also toggle between an on and an off scene. Um, or you could toggle between two different scenes. They wouldn't necessarily have to be on and off, but you could think of other instances where you could use this to toggle between um, two different uses of the room, maybe, for example, a presentation mode and a um, uh, an, um, a, an entertaining mode, for example, for, for a room. So it doesn't necessarily have to be on and off. Um, the first thing we need to do here is select how we want to turn the room off. We either turn the room off using an off scene or we can turn it off using a one bit telegram, which will send a zero. So if we if we change it to the one bit telegram option here, if we went to our group objects, you're now seeing there's a scene switching off output, which is just a one bit output as well as our one byte. Um, scene um, output. Um, but for the default, we're going to use an off scene. Um, so all we have to do to toggle between the scenes is specify your on scene, which is the default of one, and your off scene, which is default of 64. Um, when we're using toggle on and off, it still supports a single button um, toggle dimming as well. Um, so that's, you know, kind of supported in um, both single scene and, and toggle on off. We have another option here, which is the enable motion sensor blocking object. Um, so this is only um, an option when, or so this is an option both for single scene and, and toggling on and off. Um, and it gives us the ability to um, block a motion sensor um, when the scene is activated. So um, we can specify the value that is sent on that one bit blocking object here. So either a one or a zero. Um, if we are toggling um, on and off scene and we enable the, um, the, the motion sensor blocking, you can specify the value that is sent when the scene is toggled on and you can spec the value that is sent when the scene is um, turned off um, separately. The default, of course, is to block the motion sensor when uh, the on scene is selected and to unblock the motion sensor when the off scene is selected, but maybe there's some other scenarios where you'd want to differ, um, you know, deviate from those defaults. And that's why we give um, the user the, the option there. So the scene um, kind of function actually has a huge amount of functionality built into it. Um, so the main points to kind of note there are the action on long press on single button dimming and the ability to block a motion sensor um, separately. So the last one we're going to have a look at is, is value sending. This menu is extremely comprehensive. And I think actually it would be better if we did this in a separate video. So we'll follow up with a separate video on how to use value sending. Thank you very much.